Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief. Today we are talking about Meta's big developer conference, LlamaCon, everything that they announced, what people were excited about. We're going to do a little bit of a review of Zuckerberg's whistle stop tour of media. But kind of crouching behind all of this are some lurking questions, both for Meta and for open source. And I think to kick us off, it's important to go back and give a little bit of context. Now, Meta has firmly planted its flag as the big tech company who has most wrapped up its future in the triumph of open source AI as opposed to closed source models. This was for many an unexpected turn from Zuckerberg, and there are plenty of people who feel like it was largely opportunistic. But at the same time, for those who have been watching for a long time, Mark Zuckerberg really did have a conversion sort of experience when Apple almost killed their business with changes to the way that the iPhone model worked. And so the open source push is more philosophically coherent than one might think. Whatever the motivation was, it was certainly working. Throughout a lot of 2023, one of the big freakouts from Google was that Meta's developer ecosystem was beating them and OpenAI. It also felt like throughout 2024, open source was getting ever closer to the performance of closed source models, really closing the gap. And yet Meta has had a rough run of it this year. First of all, back in January, as DeepSeek released its reasoning models, reports were that Meta started freaking out. We had lots of what appeared to be leaks from inside, with engineers reporting that the company was scrambling and assembling war rooms to try to reverse engineer how DeepSeek had done what it had done with so few resources. And by and large, things just seemed in a state of upheaval. Another moment of controversy for Meta came after they released the Llama 4 family of models, with people accusing them of effectively artificially boosting their benchmark scores and releasing a different prioritized model for some of the benchmark tests than the model they released to the public. We're not going to rehash that here. The point is just to say that Meta wasn't coming into this LlamaCon riding the top of the wave. In some ways, they were fighting to get back on the horse a little bit. So first of all, let's talk about what was released at this event. Remember, we got the announcement of the new models about a month ago, so no one was expecting some big announcement on that front. A couple of the big headline reveals included, first, a native API for Llama. The Llama API is now available in a limited preview and is paired with Meta's SDKs to allow developers to build on the model family. The company didn't reveal pricing, but did boast of lightning fast speed. Through a partnership with Cerebrus, Meta claims that their API can run 18 times faster than the traditional GPU inference used by OpenAI. The comparison is even better when you consider DeepSeek's native API, which crawls along at less than one hundredth of that speed. Now, the API does what you'd expect, offering tools for fine-tuning and evaluation alongside serving the models for app integration. It may be basic infrastructure, but it's still an important step that Meta has begun to offer their own access points. The other big announcement, and one that got even more consumer attention at least, was the announcement of a standalone chatbot app for Llama models. Now, there's been no shortage of ways to access Meta's chatbots. They've been, of course, integrated into WhatsApp, Instagram, Facebook, Messenger. But having a standalone app brings Meta more into parity with their peers. We saw something similar from Grok, who first released their tools exclusively through Twitter slash X, but then spun out their own app as well. One interesting feature, which is perhaps not surprising coming from Meta, is that the Llama app has a social feed. Users can elect to share their prompts and responses with their friends across Meta's ecosystem. Now, I don't think right now there's any sort of latent demand, quote unquote, for this kind of feature. That said, Sam Altman has very publicly talked about the idea of potentially doing a social network from within ChatGPT. And just in general, it is always surprising what sort of things people actually like sharing and discovering about their peers and friends. Meta's VP of product, Connor Hayes, said that the idea is to show people what they can do with AI. Now, this is actually highly utilitarian. One of the things that we've seen for the last couple of years vis-a-vis -vis super intelligent is that a lot of the barriers to AI usage are people just not knowing what to use it for. With every other technology, the pattern has been that a tiny handful of use case inventors and discoverers go out and figure out how to use a thing and then we all copy them. And yet for a couple of years, we kind of expected everyone to figure out how to use AI for themselves which again, just runs counter to the way that technology has rolled out in the past. Anyways, as for big announcements, those were definitely the highlights. There were a few more technical additions that might move the needle for some developers. In their blog post, for example, Meta highlighted the first of several infrastructure integrations they're calling LlamaStack. Meta said that they envision LlamaStack as the industry standard for enterprises looking to seamlessly deploy production-grade turnkey AI solutions. They also announced a set of security and moderation tools and developer grants, but overall it was fairly muted. When it came to people's response to this, TechCrunch argued that the entire conference was all about undercutting OpenAI. Daniel Campos wrote, Crazy LlamaCon is happening and not a single thing from it is on the front page of Hacker News. And for some, it's hard not to feel like at this stage, Meta is pretty clearly behind. 
They're behind leaders OpenAI and Anthropic in the consumer encoding assistant markets, at least according to the benchmarks. Their latest model has been overtaken by new open source releases out of China. And yet during his keynote, Zuckerberg laid out what he sees as the next chapter of the AI race playing out like. He said, Part of the value around open source is that you can mix and match. So if another model like DeepSeek is better, or if Quen is better at something, then as developers, you have the ability to take the best parts of the intelligence from different models and produce exactly what you need. This is part of how I think open source basically passes in quality all the closed source models. It feels like sort of an unstoppable force. AI entrepreneur Ted Benson unpacked his takeaways, posting, The first LlamaCon keynote just wrapped seconds ago, and I feel like I'm getting a sense of Meta's AI strategy for the first time. They didn't say it directly, but you could hear it between the lines. Many had speculated Zuckerberg was pursuing a commoditize your competitors approach, out of fear of being trapped as an app within yet another company's platform again. I don't think that's it. If AI and AR represent an entirely new computing paradigm, that new paradigm will require a new operating system and that new operating system will require a host of standard utilities like GNU utilities were to Linux. Small fine-tuned models, large stock models, real-time voice models, 3D understanding models, image segmentation models, scene generation models. Collectively, that sounds like a lot of the standard library for a completely different platform of AI and AR computing. The insistence that all Llama derivatives be prefixed with Llama Dash feels telling. The last 40 years we've been building atop GNU Linux, I think in five years, Meta wants us to all be building a top llama slash something. And adding some credence to that was the fact that throughout the entire event, and on his numerous podcast appearances, Zuckerberg wore the Meta Ray-Bans. Now, taking a step back and moving away from Meta to the broader question of where open source stands, it's important to remember that while DeepSeek R1 was a phenomenon, it wasn't because it outperformed things like OpenAI's O1 on the benchmarks, And indeed, in performance terms, it was quickly buried by releases from all of the major AI labs. Why it had such resonance was that it was the first freely available reasoning model, the first time that consumers got their hand on reasoning in a free chat app, and because of all the scuttlebutt around how cheaply they had trained it. In an appearance on the Dwarkesh podcast released alongside the conference, Dwarkesh asked Zuckerberg straight up about how he felt that Llama 4 Maverick is now ranked 35th on LM Arena, and is generally behind and underwhelming on most of the benchmarks. Dwarkesh said, There's an impression that the gap between the best closed source and open source models has increased over the last year. Zuckerberg responded, I actually think that this has been a very good year for open source overall. The prediction that this would be the year where open source generally overtakes closed source as the most used models out there is generally on track to be true. Touching on the benchmark dominance of reasoning models, Zuckerberg said that the new paradigm of scaling test time compute is compelling and that a Llama 4 reasoning model would be coming soon. However, he added that, for a lot of the things that we care about, latency and good intelligence per cost are actually much more important product attributes. He also made the argument that benchmarks are gameable, especially when it comes to LM Arena, and said that tuning for benchmark performance had often led the company astray. He said, I think you just need to be a little careful with some of the benchmarks, and we're going to index primarily on the products. Now, if you look around, there continues to be plenty of skepticism of where Meta is right now. Earlier in the month, Fortune, for example, published a piece called Some Insiders Say Meta's AI Research Lab is Dying a Slow Death. I'm not really sure. There's no doubt that open source competition is increasing, that the models out of China are putting intense competitive pressure on Zuckerberg and everyone else who's thinking about open source. It is also the case that open source models have not surpassed the big closed source models, especially as reasoning has become the dominant paradigm. I also do think, though, that Zuckerberg is playing an extremely long game here. I do not believe that he views winning as who has the most downloaded app on the Apple App Store charts. I think he views winning as who owns the infrastructure in the future, which is basically what Ted Benson was arguing in that post. There is no doubt that certain competitive pressures may have forced Meta's timelines in ways that were a little uncomfortable and leave the appearance of being behind, but I am far from counting them out yet. But that at least is the story for now. Appreciate you guys listening or watching as always. And until next time, peace.